Hi there, this is John Wilkinson again from History Made Easier with a short presentation pointing out the different phases of the Korean War. To begin with, I feel a timeline would be useful so that you can more easily track the events. As well as the three UN resolutions, note the three phases of the war the initial DPRK advance, the impact of the UN American forces as they pushed them back, and in turn, the impact of the Chinese volunteers as they pushed the UN American forces out of the north, before it all ends up where it began, at the 38th parallel. Now, I'll post one of these timelines on my website. I'll pinch it from my containment ebook, and that will give you a little more detail. But looking at that first phase in a little more detail, South Korea was quickly overrun by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea after it invaded on June the 25th, 1950. This is hardly surprising as the DPRK had been planning for this war. Don't forget Kim had twice gone to Moscow and asked for Stalin's blessing. And he now put all their forces, land, sea and air, into the invasion. And not only had the North Koreans gained experience fighting in the Chinese Civil War, but some had been specially trained in the Soviet Union for the invasion. Consequently, having taken the South Koreans by surprise, the DPRK forces quickly took Seoul, the Republic of Korea's capital. And by mid-September, their army had control of the whole peninsula, except for a small corner in the southeast that included the city and port of Pusan, today known as Busan. The DPRK was on the verge of taking total control of the whole peninsula. But in fact, it was only the first phase of the war. The second phase began on September the 15th with a two-pronged offensive from the UN forces. It was a bold move. UN forces landed at Pusan but they also landed at Incheon, in the Republic of Korea's west coast, near the 38th parallel, and so behind the DPRK's front line. It was the turn of the DPRK forces to be taken by surprise, as they were cut off from their supplies. The UN forces quickly pushed the DPRK forces back across the 38th parallel, and deep into the DPRK, capturing their capital, Pyongyang, in the process. This invasion of the North, as General MacArthur was fully aware, was far beyond the terms of the UN mandate. However, faced with the situation on the ground, and with Soviet opposition in the UN thwarted by the Uniting for Peace resolution, which I'll explain in my characteristics presentation, the UN authorised the operation. This meant a very different ball game, one that could change the strategic balance in the region in the West's favour. But as the DPRK boarded the PRC, that's the People's Republic of China, I'm sorry, it now felt threatened. Consequently, the PRC warned that if the advance northwards was not halted, the PRC would have to respond. Despite this, the UN forces got to within a hundred kilometers of the Yalu River and the PRC's border. And the size of the Chinese volunteers force and I'll explain the volunteers in my characteristics presentation as well. The size of that force and their resolute determination was such 
that it proved another turning point in the war. And in this third phase, the UN American troops were swept back, and it was the turn of the Chinese troops to cross the 38th parallel, Seoul again falling to the communists. The war reached a stalemate, though America was bombing the DPRK heavily. With both sides dug in, like into World War I-like trenches and fortifications each side of the 38th parallel. And though it took another two years and more fierce fighting along the border and continued heavy bombing of the DPRK, peace talks led to a border pretty much where it all began, at the 38th parallel. And so, let's end with a brief look at how you might apply what we have covered in this presentation. Of course, there might be some straightforward descriptive questions, like those you see on this slide. But you might use some of the detail we've covered to support points in questions like the B question and C question I've also included. And there will be more to come to support these last two questions in my presentation on the characteristics of the Korean War. But I've covered what I set out to do for this one. So it only remains for me, as always, to thank you for listening. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It makes me feel loved. And tell your friends about it too. But for now, cheers.